Hey guys, I might be getting ahead of myself, but I'm feeling a little bit of moment momentum in my spirit, and I wanted to share another dream. Um, sometimes, guys, what I do when I start making videos is just uh, start saying, start talking in the camera. Get over that first initial speed bump, you know, of awkwardness. And then pretty soon, there's just this waterfall of mo movement in your speech and in your heart. So I want to share this dream. I'm going to title the video, The Bullet Train to Hell, because in this dream, I was at a train station. I want to give you a couple, a little bit of backstory. This was about eight months ago, six to eight months ago. I was really backsliding, texting girls, some really inappropriate things. And uh, I knew I was backsliding, but man, the flesh was just it was it was brutally attacking me so i was kind of i was getting off, i was going off the rails and i knew i shouldn't and i knew i was walking on thin ice and god's so good to me man he shows me things and he chastens me right away man i don't get very far in my sin and god will just whoosh, 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 just whip me so in this dream probably the night before I was sending some some scandalous texts and uh, things I knew I shouldn't have been doing and uh, trying to set up more sin right so in this dream I'm at this, this train station and there's this just this old looking train and a line of men and women just all formed up almost like we we're in the army or something and in the very front it was, it was, I can't decide if it was Satan or Jesus at first, but I knew I was in a dark place, man. It was, it was so dark and it was scary. I knew that train, when you get on that train, dude, it's over for you. There's something, you just look at it. And in the spirit world, you just know when things aren't right. So I looked at this thing and immediately was terrified. And all the people next to me, their spirit, their countenance, man, they were, it was death. So I was maybe in the third row, second row. And I thought, you know, this guy up here was Jesus, right? So I kind of skip ahead and I'm real close to this guy. He was the whitest person there. I can't say, and I won't say it was Jesus. But uh, he was like, I couldn't decide if he was hope or if he was death. And I'll give you a reason why. Because once I got up there, this guy was telling us of why we were here. And he was very calmly setting up this communion, right? And in these little cups was like this rotting flesh, man. It was just looking at it. It was so vile. And I knew that I had to swallow it. I had to eat it. It was my portion, right? This flesh was so vile. Just even in my, in the spirit world, it was so disgusting to even look at it. By looking at it, you could smell it and you were just sick to your stomach. Well, Jesus or this person was very calmly setting it up for everyone at the train station and telling us why we had to eat this portion now. And uh, he was telling us how we'd all just failed to take the message and to change our lives. And my only, my only hope was to climb up there to this guy. And I, it's just my last attempt. I knew too, as the words were leaving my mind, no, you, you don't get to play these games, Tom. No, 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 it's no, no more playing the victim. Um, so I come up to this guy and I said, well, what about the, the guys that are trying, but it's so hard. We're just failing, we're trying, but man, life's beating us down. Sin is beating us down. And Jesus, that's when I realized it was more of Jesus than not. This, this man looked at me and it was no longer a peaceful, loving Jesus. It was anger. And he looked at me with these fiery eyes and he said, those children, those men 
are living under the, the yoke of Satan. And he looked me dead in the eyes and I, I had nothing at that point. I thought, okay, I can't play the victim card. I can't play, I can't get any pity anymore out of this guy. I am playing on thin ice and this ice is about to break and it's here. This is, this is my portion now. I have to swallow this rotting flesh See, when you're alive, you get to enjoy the communion of Jesus. That beautiful bread it tastes all good in that water to quench your thirst. It tastes so good. And it's nice, but I think there's a communion of the dead, man. It's, it's, it's when you, you messed up. You didn't, you didn't take all the exits you were supposed to take. And now here you are at the final road. And, uh, in a way, there's hell to pay now. So when he looked at me, those men are under the yoke of Satan. I still don't fully know what that means. But you see, this, this dream was just not another dream. Hopping in a clown car, hopping out, eating some Chipotle, funny to jokey. It was serious business, very real, very symbolic, very symbolic. And so I woke up and still thought I could, oh, I'm gonna try to do better, you know? And man, I, I, I still, I wander like we all do, man, but I really am just trying to put my feet to the plow. I'm really just trying to live better. Do I still wanna have fun? Yeah, look, I drink beer. If that offends you, unsubscribe. I love beer. I wish I didn't. I love to have a good time and laugh. I'm not always perfect. But I'm really gonna try to get my act together. Um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to share that message, communion, communion of the damned. There was another part of the dream after I got back in line, you know, and I was so rattled that I could not get play the victim card anymore. Um, I got back in line, and this creature came and showed this man who's going around with this black mirror, showing us. You know, you look in the mirror and I saw this guy just transform even uglier before my eyes. And I just thought, man, I don't want to look in that mirror. Man, there's so much hopelessness down here. Look, if you're still breathing, you have hope. Um, repent. I know it's hard out here. You got those websites. You got, you know, the internet. You got, man, there's so many things that tug at our heart. I know. But uh, get on your knees and, tr and repent and ask. One thing that's really been helping me is I, I, when I pray, I tell God, I say, God, I'm not going to sit here and act a certain way. I'm going to tell you flat out, I love my sin more than you. It's not right. Um, I love the way my sin makes me feel. And I, I pursue it and I chase it. I chase it more than I chase you. And I think God appreciates honesty rather than getting on your high horse and trying to act like you got it all together. So um, it's my way of humbling myself. Just saying, God, I, I don't know. Without you, I'm done. But I'm here confessing right bef to on, your, on your feet that uh, I need help and I need you to heal me. And I'm, I still have a long way to go. We all do. I wanted to share that. Maybe it'll help one person. Maybe you don't fully understand the consequences of your actions and you think we're just here to play. We're not just here to play. And um, I don't know why there's consequences. I don't know why the things are the way they are. But it's the way God structured things. And so I'm just going to be obedient, share the dream. Don't say you weren't warned of the bullet train to hell. And to all you Christians that are still trying to live in both worlds and enjoy, enjoy Christ and then have your secret sin in the back, you're playing with fire. And uh, just try to get your act in order. Try to, try to share the good message. It'll kind of help you keep in line more. Um, help people do something good um, don't just be neutral 
you actually have to get your battle boots on and get in, get out here. Um, yeah, again, I'm not somebody that's perfect. I'm not a preacher. I'm riddled with sin, but uh, I'm gonna keep making videos every day, inspiring people, trying to trying to at least help. We're all out here in the trenches and some people want to kick you when you're down. They want to smell your weakness and try to exploit it. Um, we live in kind of a cold world sometimes. But uh, just know when you're on God's side, you have an abundance. There's always an abundance of prayer, mercy. Um, you can ask God for possessions that you need, financial resources. Um, I remember when I first turned my life around, I only had $100 to my name. I was broke, living for the weekend, buying $60 t-shirts, hoping that uh, I was cool enough for the cool crowd. Um, just clowning. And I had 100 bucks. I got a DUI. And while I was in jail, I, you know, God really revealed himself to me. And so, I tried to live my life better and now I think I have more than all I need as a single man. I don't have a family. Um, I have multiple, multiple more than I need on a daily basis. I am abundant in so many ways. I'm so grateful to God. Um, I try to do my best to be generous to other people. But um, I just want to share that message too. If you're kind of struggling, God wants to give you what you need, but don't get it twisted. If, you, if he gives you things and you start worshiping things, he's gonna have to take them away. So you kind of have to put things in their proper place and God will bless you with so much more than you could ever dream of if, if he knows he can trust you with that kind of thing. Um, I don't know, I just felt like sharing, sharing that too. That probably deserves its own video and I'll make it. But uh, I wanted to share another message while the iron was hot. So let me know what you guys think. Hope you guys are all doing well out there and uh, staying hydrated. Um, yeah, I just pray for me that I can still have, that I can receive more inspiration to share with people and um, yeah, take care, guys.